Today's podcast is brought to you by HelloFresh. Mm. Now, HelloFresh is a meal subscription mm. service that offers fresh, premium quality meals. There are loads of different recipes to choose from. And yeah. what I like about it is even someone like myself, who's a bit of a basic cook at best, can make these cordon bleu meals, oh. can make these premium quality, delicious meals. We're based in the city center, and you yeah. know what it's like. It's easy just to get a takeaway on the way home or just to ring some up and get it delivered. But this gives you the opportunity to get your recipes sent out, mm. get your meals sent out, get your ingredients sent out, and then cook yourself something nice. What's great as well, when they send you the recipe cards and the other different recipes, yeah. they'll let you know like this is easy difficulty level, this is medium, this is a little bit more difficult, but it's all doable. Yeah. Because even someone like myself can do it. I've been cooking some steak meals mm. for, uh, for Myself and my, You're my lady so friend. Into these I know, I well, am. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm really enjoying it as well because there's a sense <laughs> of achievement yeah. when you've actually cooked a nice meal yeah. and you can sit down. And you think, you know, I'll put a bit of time into this. I put a bit of effort, and it, it sort of the meal looks like it's one of those where you think That's, that must have been really hard. Some restaurant that together, and you think actually it's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> I had the uh, I rested all the heavy lifting for me. I had the prawn poke bowl, yeah. which nice. was sensational. Yeah. Also, my flatmate, he's been getting it on the veggie stuff because he's vegetarian, so you can have it customized and tailored depending on your dietary needs yeah. on any requirements that you have and they're all sensational like you said if you're a basic cook an entry-level cook you can get the stuff that, that suits that if you're someone that likes to challenge yourself try new things go for the sort of slightly more audacious recipes there's plenty of stuff to suit you as well to get involved all you have to do is click the link in the description and use the code stretford60 to get 60 percent off your first box and 25 percent off for two months using the code, again, Stretford60. That is 60% off your first box and 25% off for two months using the code Stretford60. Go and check it out. JF Stretford Paddock, that's Joe Smith. That's the Housewives' favorite, Alex Bagley. This is the brew, no Stephen Housen. We will be hearing from him tomorrow. Big shout out to HelloFresh. Mm. Those meals were gorgeous. Oh, sensational. Lots of brownie points for me for cooking a nice meal as well. Mm. Bit of a rarity, unfortunately. Um, how are we? All right, yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Looking forward to proper football being back next week. Forget proper. This World, World Cup nonsense out of mm. the way. I, I don't want to watch Argentina and Brazil and, you know, Portugal. Mm. I want to watch Burnley. Mm. <laughs> Remember how upset Andy was it you that I yeah, yeah. got really upset when you said, oh, Burnley, oh, can't bother I, I, I just made the point that we, we get really bad home draws in every cup con. And it's not mm. that we don't get like easy ties, but it's just like ties we've seen all the time. Mm. Ties that so are top, top. Everton or Wolves or Villa. It's never Brighton. either a big game no. or a non-league club. No. There's, never, there's never that. Where, no. Even away. It's not even... No. Going to South End away or something, where it's That'd a three thousand seat stadium, be great. Yeah. You know, be good yeah. to see that and have that on. But no, it's Everton at home and Burnley at home, and yeah. it's just Burnley as well. Who are you? Don't get any credit for beating them because they're a Championship team, but they're absolutely flying at the minute. Yeah. And they and they've what they have two minute, two weeks break and then they've been playing games again. So they're right on it. They've been training. They're ready to go. They're winning games. They're looking great. I think they're top of the league, aren't yeah, they, in yeah. the Championship? So most likely they are essentially a Premier League team that you're playing. And it's a, such a banana skin of a game, that. It's, it's such a banana skin. You know, skin. the horrible thing about that is, as well, I'll just spot on my screen, excuse me. Um, if they win, all the City fans will come out of the woodwork. Oh, no, company. Because it's, oh, Vinny Company, uh, doing it over United again. <laughs> and all that drivel. So you've got that as well, haven't you? And Disgusting. If we carry on, I know we had a, the resis out, but if we play anything like we did against, um, was it Real Betis? Mm. Yeah. Um, and who's the one? Is it Cadets? Yeah. Then we might be in a bit of trouble. What I do you make of these sort of Premier League? Maybe not legend. Well, Com Vincent Company is probably a Premier League no, legend, yes. isn't it? I hate. I, I, um, do you know what? Actually, I don't mind Vincent Company. Mm. He's as a person. I don't. Yeah, want, I hate right. City, but he's all right. I've met him a few times. He's all right. He's just very oh, good. Sozard. Yeah. Do you know what he did? <laughs> I mean, though? you've met him a few times. What does he? Mm. Do you go to the same fucking golf club or something? <laughs> Oh, I've met yeah. him a few times. I've I think I am, him, Alex Bagley. I've met him at Bridge. No. What do you mean you've met him <laughs> a few <laughs> times? I, um, I interviewed him a couple of times. Did you? Um, and I met him once at Wynn. What for the, the blog? This, it's called The Secret, what, Blue or something? Yeah. <laughs> the Secret <laughs> yeah. Blue, yeah. That's what it's called. I interviewed yeah. him for the I Love Man City The main blog. road Don't tell anyone. Debater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top blog shot dot twat. That's what you're fucking... <laughs> 
What's happened? I don't know. I don't know why I'm having a dig. <laughs> dog shit. What was that? I don't a know. Don't repeat do- it. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> I don't know. What, what, what are you trying to like? say is, Jace, you're a secret City fan, and now everyone knows it. Um, you protest too much. Oh, I'm going to go to Old Trafford all the time. Who's the guy that went from Aston no Villa to The bald-headed geezer. Oh, Fabian, is it Fabian Dow? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so he, he said, I don't like Fabian Dow when I interviewed him. It's annoying me a little bit. It's a compliment like for you, him. though, isn't it? <laughs> is that a, a, much, a much fitter hey. man. <laughs> um, what I was going to say... Who's rattled that? your cage today, anyway? I'm just excited. Hey, you get drafted excited. in because Steve's away. You start giving it the Yeah, well, in. someone's got to do Steve's job, haven't they? Of just taking the mick and derailing everything. We're not talking about, we're not talking about war and films yet, Jim. Yeah, come not on. Yeah, I will do, though. Talk about war and films. Go on. War and peace. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you make of uh, these sort of Premier League legends joining like lower league teams and like? Did you see the Colo Toro thing? You seen? He's, he's, he's the Wigan manager. Have you seen that? That's mental. That's did you see the quote from him? No. One of my all-time favourite quotes. He said, "When Wigan come knocking, you just can't say no." That's a lie. Like <laughs> no one That's a lie. has ever said Let that before. Let me see this. When Wigan come knocking. You can't say no. Can. That isn't true. You definitely can. Everyone has said no to Absolutely Wigan for can. about 400 years. Like, that is not a thing. See if you can find the quote. I saw it on Twitter. I'm looking. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I hope no, this pause I mean, lasts for ages. He doesn't... Is he, he, doesn't, um, is he, he not said it on there? Not on that one. Has he said um, that? The atmosphere at the DW Stadium? Something to that yeah. effect of when Wigan come calling. Yeah. You don't I, I say believe, no. I like, can believe you, it. Like, you don't say no to Wigan. Like, he's talking about... The KGB or something <laughs> like you know. I can because Ma- <laughs> when Wigan come knocking at your door, yeah, no, you, you don't, I, you don't turn you them can't, down. Yeah, when Wigan came, you can't turn that down. Apparently, he said. Um, you can. No, you, you absolutely can turn Wigan down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People have been doing that for <laughs> centuries. Turning Wigan down. <laughs> yeah, when Wigan came, you know, you can't turn that down. You can't turn that down. Other than the other twelve managers they approached. It, um, if you can hear. What can only play musical as fucking as dickheads as yeah. upstairs again, as like they do on every Friday? You know, we're gonna clip this up and send it to him. No, because then they'll, no, they'll they say nasty things to me. <laughs> yeah, what do they bark. do? The more bark, bark, Alex. What do you think they do? What I they? think they are doing musical chairs, and whoever gets, whoever stays in last gets like a ten grand bonus or something. It's yeah, a proper okay. like, like dog eat dog business yeah, like yeah, call yeah, center yeah. thing upstairs, <laughs> isn't it? Where they're all screaming at tellies and there's American flags hung up and stuff. Have you seen it? It's mad. It's like Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Neon lights everywhere. Yeah, it's crazy. Everyone's got <laughs> cocaine and those shirts where it's blue and then the collar and the oh, cuffs yeah. are white. Gordon Gecko yeah. style. Yeah. Um, Adam Sharp in the Super Chat says, I'm gonna be, he's been a member of the Academy for 12 months, by the way. He says, I'm going to be in the away end at Burnley going with my mate who's a Burnley fan. Love that. Uh, that'll get be stuck in. interesting. Don't try and baffle them with science by asking them what the score is or anything like that. They'll get confused. <sighs> you can um, say that because you're from around here. You what? Very disrespectful to the Burnleyans. Burnleyans. I used to cover Burnley and Black. Like Burnley and Blackburn is one of the roughest games ever in terms of like arrests. There's more arrests per hundred people or whatever in the in that game, that derby, the East Lancs derby, mm. than any other game in Britain. And you used to interview like you go and interview say Burnley fans and they'd be like, "Think about Blackburn fans, right? It's just dead thick." Mm. And he'd be like, All right, "Okay." <laughs> and then you go and interview the Blackburn fans. Blackburn, think about them dingles. They haven't got a brain cell between them. Right, right, okay. <laughs> just some cheering from upstairs. Genuinely, <laughs> it's mental. The weekly, the weekly bonus. Yeah, yeah. It is Wolf of Wall Street up there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, Patrick Cassidy, who's been a member of the Academy for 24 months, thanks for your support, says up the paddock. Yes, man. Um, Andy Oates says, Burnley, come on, lads, we will beat them. Do you remember the sort of, I feel like one of the lowest ebbs as a United fan was when Burnley beat us 2-0 at Old Trafford. Yeah. I remember that game as being a particular low but point. But that, that almost... I, mean, I know that sounds dramatic, but genuinely, because I thought, we're just fucked. What are we doing? Like, yeah. we've got a... The team's pretty crap. Yeah. The manager, I don't think he knows what he's doing, and he certainly you know, that was under Solskjaer. Yeah, anyway. Solskjaer, yeah, yeah. Like, the game. you know, it was I around like the guy, guy, January 2020. Yeah. No, wasn't it was. It, it was yeah. spot on, yeah. and it was like you know, there was no light in the tunnel. We were six points off top four, mm. and you just thought, what are we doing? Where are we going? We're just doomed. The Glazers have doomed us. Yeah. And Oli, I love him, but he's not the man to get us out of this. And this team isn't good enough. Um, and I remember just feeling proper sort of just disconsolate. Nice. And then, um, and then we bought Bruno Fernandes oh. and we went on a 21 game unbeaten run and finished third. Mm. Mental. It was just one of those that you're looking at that team because I think under Jose and Van Hal you went, 
There's players there. Like mm. Jose was benching Paul Pogba a lot. And, and also and there's a manager who managers that there. I know with it didn't really work out, but you believe that because they've done it before, yeah. they, at some point they'll do it again. Yeah. Whereas Solskjaer, he didn't really and have also, that to But you were looking at his bench and he was going, all right, he's, he's starting Pereira, but his other option is... Should we have a look, actually? Well, he's not got anybody else. Yeah. There wasn't. There was no other other possibility to bring on. And that yeah. was the thing that was frustrating. You know, you've you seen him putting kids, I think Brandon Williams was playing loads of games. You were going, all right, yeah, but there isn't a Luke Shaw because he's injured. No, there and, he was, and he was left. poor at that point There wasn't as well. a Tellers at this point yeah. either. There was just nobody. There was another child to come in, kind of. Yeah, definitely. So That's, that was what sorry, made it worse. Was there was just... You felt like Ollie's doing the best he can with what he's got, that, and yeah. there's just nothing you can change. He couldn't inspire this this team. Go that on, that team. That team. That's it. To be fair, it's not a million miles away from a team that uh, was successful. Um, like, it is, Jay. right? Well, De Gea, Wan Bissaka, Phil Jones, Harry Maguire, Brandon Williams. Right? right. Okay. Three of that back five made up the rest of the, the team for the rest of the season that went mm. on to finish third. Yeah, but I mean, just yeah. when you compare it to now, maybe. Oh, yeah, now. It's yeah, really yeah. My, but my point is, okay, like, the rest that of the team year. that finished third, this wasn't a million miles No, away. no. Fred and Nemanja Matic, yep. Juan Mata, Pereira, Dan James, Andy Martial leading the line. Obviously, you know, Marcus, I think, has just got injured. Mm. You look on the bench, we had Eric Bailly, Jesse Lingard, Delo, Romero, Luke Shaw, Mason Greenwood, Angel Gomez. So... It's mad though because it that you team can see is there was, there was average in it. But what happened was, if you remember, Bruno came in. Martial, I remember in that game was awful, but he just come back from injury. Mm. Bruno came in. Martial started playing a lot better. I think Marcus came back from having his, his had a back injury. He he got a few goals. Then um, I can't remember if Pogba came back or not, but I think Lindelof or someone came back as well. well it, we had the start of it where Bruno came in scoring loads of goals. Then yeah. the pandemic hit, didn't they? That was it. Thank and you. And then it just. Mm. You came back from that and you're Pogba like, was Pogba, was from, yeah, Pogba was Bruno back was playing that. and he was just like, this yeah. is your team now. Ollie had great. figured it out with a bit of bit of time off, but they had a few weeks of training before and without yeah. any games. Yeah. And you just had a team. Because it was if, the Tottenham you, game. You, this yeah, is it. Where you go Pogba the, came off the bench and won a penalty. You go to the Tottenham game, which is just after the pandemic, the first game, well, the pandemic was still a thing, but yeah, it yeah. was the first game back. So you had Martial, Rashford, Bruno, Dan James, Fred, McTominay, Luke Shaw, Harry Maguire, Vitzel Lindelof, Wan Bissaka, and De Gea. That's pretty much your team. That's one of my United's greatest ever teams, though. That's the most ridiculous <laughs> thing that I've ever heard in my life. Um, all right, then. Name me a single other Manchester United team that has gone unbeaten away from home more than that one. Um, I think if I, you check your records, Ernest Magnol's 1908 team. The answer is none. <laughs> that doesn't mean... That so, therefore... Right, it's not one of the best United teams ever, though, is it? All right, then, the best. What are you trying to say? <laughs> no, obviously not. But there's, when, I, when I see that team, it yeah. reminds me of a warmth that I enjoyed watching Man United when that, that team was playing. That like, we, were sh we were still shit, but like, yeah. they were excited to watch. <coughs> Excuse me, they were excited to watch. They scored goals. They could go on unbeaten runs. You, we'd come back from being down all the time. Mm. It felt like watching Man United again. Obviously, not to the, the highs of winning games and uh, winning trophies, but... There was something where after Jose, everything was so dull and dead and boring. That team was actually quite exciting again. And I, 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 I do like I, it for I, that. Obviously, it's not what, remotely close what, to being what one of the United saying, There was a few things that annoyed me that season, though. Like, that team, yeah, the run was great and everything that went on was great. The fact there was no fans, and I don't just mean going to the game, because I don't you know, I do not do many aways. It's just having the fans in the stadium makes a difference when you're watching it on the telly. Mm. The Scouts has won the title that season, which just infuriated me. Because it was like they've done it. Okay, don't they've done it without any fans. There, still, still don't count. Though. Done it, it's well no. annoying. Um, and it was one of those where we got third, didn't we, on like the final day? So we just about you had that sort of thing. Are we even going to get top four? But in the end, we, it did come good, and there was a lot of good games along the way. And Bruno was a f revelation. Uh, I've been at Verma, who's been a member of the academy for twenty months. Joe, if you're filling up for Steve, mm -hmm. what's your favourite conspiracy theory, and what's your memory of '99 final and '99 '91? Sorry, as well. My, f my memory of 91 is just chilling out, sort of egg style in my mum's uterus. Were you not yeah. there in Rotterdam? <clears throat> I didn't go. Why? I was really, really unborn at that point. You, oh, yeah, I you was weren't. You were really, really unborn. I was just, I, yeah, I know. I tried to. I texted him. I was like, sorry, lads, can't turn up today. Do you know what? I've not been fucking you born You YouTubers yet. do my idea, man. Oh, no. Honestly. The, Call yourself reds. I didn't go because it didn't exist. What sort of an excuse is that? My na my memories of the '99 final were watching it in the front room with my two sisters because yeah. my dad had gone to the game, so in he fact, wasn't. My there. dad was there as well. Um, screaming, jumping up and down when when they scored, and the neighbours banging on the wall telling us to be quiet. That's my memory of the '99 final. Yeah. And my favourite conspiracy. Have you seen that one today with the snow? 
Have you seen this? this is, have you seen? <laughs> have you seen it? Some bloke goes outside, there's snow <laughs> outside, <laughs> and he gets a big snowball and puts it on a coal fire, like, do you know, like a log burning stove type thing. Yeah. Opens it up, puts the big snowball on it, and it leaves it on there for 20, 30 seconds. Don't really, don't melt. It's, it's not, it's 20, not real snow. 20 seconds. So, yeah, so the conspiracy is that it's, it's a government-imposed weather system to act as a sort of... Um, uh, locked down by proxy, keeping us in our houses by scaring it's us with, with weather. It's a new lockdown, Jay. Get into it. It's a new lockdown. And then the he holds weather. a match to it, and instead of melting, it just goes black. A government-imposed weather. Yeah. This government, who are literally the most incompetent government in the history not this of mankind. No, no, it's not this government. It's the government above that government. Oh, right. There's yeah, yeah, like yeah. Your yeah. Rockefellers, yeah. your... Um, you know, you Jeremy Beadles, your yeah. Illuminatis. Yeah, yeah. Illuminatis. They're controlling the weather. Yeah. I saw that. I saw something on Twitter. You know, Graham Hunter used to do the La Liga TV stuff. Yeah. He's part of it. Right, okay. <laughs> the cabal. The cabal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. Controlling you know the weather. Kabul, who used to play for Tottenham. Yeah, yeah. He's not part Didn't of it. Didn't he play? No. no. He where did he backed out. Was he, was he just at Tottenham? Fulham, was that right? Yeah. Um, the lizard people, Jay, says Man, uh, Man Ver uh, Also, the 12 Days of Paddock. Yes. We are doing the 12 Days of Paddock. People are asking, where is it? It's starting. I can never do this. Starts on the 20. Go on, push it up. Oh, God, oh, oh, it starts on Christmas, on Boxing Day, like the 12 days of Christmas are meant to start. Oh, no, it starts on Christmas Day, excuse Christmas me. Day. Right, so it starts, starts on, on Christmas, Christmas Day, Day and, and goes on for 12 days, which is right. what the 12 days the of Christmas is. Joe's going to be there, mince pie, on YouTube yeah. going, this is the first And so all you have stuff. to do to be in with a chance of winning 12 different prizes, yeah. 12 different prizes, including £500 cash. All you have to do is join our membership. You get extra videos, extra content as well, and you'll be automatically entered into all of those prizes. So join the membership, click the join button under this video to be in with a chance of winning. Just a way of paying back our lovely, lovely members. Um, YouTube says he's talking about cloud seeding geoengineering. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sim Forbes says chem chemical planes or chem planes. Yeah, there you go. He says, uh, Brian Case said it's the same people keeping Phil Jones at Isn't United. it interesting that, that these people yeah. would put clouds in the sky and chemicals in the air yeah. on the same planet that they fucking live on? <laughs> but like, do they really, Jack? Yeah, it's meant That's to be like question. silver and like magnesium and all that shit. It's like oh, in London and stuff, where the where like the government live, and where it's in America as well, where these big sort of people are meant to live. Unless they're on another planet watching over us, yeah. I'm pretty sure that these clouds would be affecting them as well. It's all no. just nonsense, isn't it? Uh, Abinan Verma says, it's still mad how Bruno came, asserted himself in the team and became a fan favourite that quickly. Ed says, Bruno came in like Canon Iron 92. Abinan Verma says, also says, Jay, what's your memory watching that 1908 team? I was only young. Mm. I, barely, I was only about two. Right. So I can barely remember it. You, you were one of those, you, used to, you were protesting, weren't you? We're not changing from Newton Heath. <laughs> like, you were there. Hey, Green and gold yeah. until the club is sold. That was yeah, that was yours, wasn't what, it? We're becoming Manchester United. What's that's that? A terrible idea. What does that mean? Do you know what I mean? We're Newton, Newton Heath. Heath forever. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I don't actually. They used to call you United. Newton Keith, didn't they? They did. You were so yeah. up for it. Yeah. <laughs> Newton Keith. Have you heard about this World Cup club thing, Infantino? Has been talking. Yeah, it's about. the FIFA we're sanctions. Looking like, we're looking like you're fighting. Could you give us any less detail, please, Jay? Right, me, we've just been discussing it upstairs <laughs> ten minutes ago. Yeah, but they've the not. Don't know right. that. <laughs> they right, baggers. Tell them. It's thirty-two teams. <laughs> yeah, and that's about all I know. Same as the, it's the same format as the World Cup, but for clubs. Right. Did I have no idea how you qualify for it, but I'm guessing it's we like you and you need to be there. Mm. Yeah. I and mean, let's it. assume it's. Similar to the Champions League, but you've got teams from Argentina and Korea. Well, no, it's going to be similar to the World Cup, so it's yeah. going to be in a tournament style. Yeah, and but you qualify, and then it's oh, you have to qualify separately. I'm, it's not, I it's reckon not it's based gonna, on how you do in your own league. I don't think it'll be league because it'll probably be like UEFA. So if you how you do in the Champions League, maybe, but I just don't see how that mm. works and how the qualifying is going to work for it and all that. Because if they do it as a qualifying separate, like they can't do, be doing that. It's going to be mental. Yeah, separate qualifying with. 600 club teams in it who can't have that I don't I don't see the point in it because I think that I'm I know fi well, FIFA want to do it because they want to have more again it's the same as everyone said about the Super League it's more times where you want the top two teams or whatever yeah. playing each other they don't think the Champions League is enough that's why they're doing the league thing for the Champions League in the next few years but not being disrespectful to outside of Europe but the European teams are going to win. The European team have won the w Club World Cup where they play well, that small the thing, tournament like every single time. There's only once they've not done it. United lost. 
that was in 99 wasn't it, was it I 99? think we lost yeah, one yeah, yeah. I think but I think since then it's it, the difference has been crazy yeah. it's only been but once it, in the past I t- right I think it immediately you my bo- my brain goes shit idea hate it super league same again hate it yeah but actually if it's a tournament where you get to play all the best teams from around the world and you have to qualify for it that was the real gripe with the super league for me was that this is a tournament that negates the level of competition and and like teams being able to progress and and achieve entry to it it was just a set teams that's what the the problem with the super league was um if it's a, like we already have the club world cup and no one kicks off when Chelsea went to do it, or you know, it's 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 a sort of accepted part of, of football, and uh, uh, the, like conceptually, a tournament where all of the best teams in the world, not just Europe, go against each other to see who is the best club team in the world. I'm not necessarily against that. Own- I like that as a concept. Who's the best team, not in Europe, in the world? That's that's a, a relatively fair thing to want to see. I think. I, I, I do agree. You know what I, mean? I think that the issues are that. It means that every single summer now there will be a tournament of some sort. Yeah. Because Copper America fits in between everything at the minute. Yeah. And then you can have another one. So every single summer there will be a club. There'll be a. Is this going to be every four years? I think so. Yeah. I think that's how they're going to do it. So you're going to have that in there. Yeah. But also you saying that okay, it's going to be qualifying. They have to wait it towards Europe ridiculously, or yeah. there's no point. Because if they do it evenly across the continents and you only have six European teams, it's not going to be. You're not going to get the spectacle that they want because I'm no, not being funny, true. but the, Aus- yeah, the two Australian teams aren't going to do that well. No, because they want Madrid, Barca, Bayern, United, yeah. Juve, Inter. They want City. They want all of. I mean, I'm all the best European teams, and then sort of a smattering. They're going to change. Really, they'll probably they? change the World Cup soon because it'll be bad for them that Italy didn't play this year. Yeah. Yeah. they'll have gone. That's no good. The Salah's not played. Okay, is there a way of us getting a yeah. team that's you know, you know, more teams in that way? They're gonna restructure things, so I think that's just gonna be more bent stuff and weird. And well, it's, it is. It's been the the the, the, um, the World Cup, um, is, which is thirty two teams drawn into eight groups of four. It's such a change, and they expanded forty eight team tournament in four years time. Jesus Christ. With the FIFA Council choosing to in twenty seventeen for the nations to be split into sixteen groups of three. Now I think he's gonna look at that. Um, the, the three, the sixteen groups of three, on off the back of this World Cup in Fantino because it was such a success yeah. on the pitch. Oh, like we've not had sixty years of, to like work that out already. Yeah, or however long it's been four he's, teams. He's, in, in he's a right whopper in yeah. Fantino. I can't stand him. I mean, I didn't like Seth Blatter, but he's you know, just doing he, it in another way of getting as much money as possible. Yeah, that's the that's the thing sticking his nose in and trying to come up with these new ideas and Arsene Wenger can do one as well because he's mm. been involved in it and apparently he's the new FIFA's $200 million global talent ID search he's going to lead that mint Great. Well, he was saying we should have a World Cup every two years wasn't he? Yeah, every two I mean? weeks yeah, I bore off I know. yeah, I'd, and also Infantino was just coming out with nonsense as well he was saying um, that the controversial, controversial time in this World Cup has actually led to better football rather than at the, than at the end of an exhausting season. Um, and he's also been going on about sort of... Well, that's that's such a, like, like one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah, I, I, sorry I beat you up, but in a way it's good you had that scan because you found out you had, you know, hepatitis. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't yeah. have had that if I hadn't kicked your face in. This like, it's proper, like, oh, actually... You know, there's one tiny good thing in a myriad of awful, shit, stupid, um, corrupt things. That doesn't make it all right. Because he said as well, teams shouldn't make protests on the pitch, i.e. rainbow armbands, as those fans who come to the stadium, billions watching on TV, have their own problems and just want to spend 90 minutes without having to think about anything else, just to enjoy a little moment of joy. That's the, that's the point that he's not getting. Mm. Like, if you're a member of the LGBTQ community, when you're seeing someone standing up for you, that is bringing you a little bit of joy. Mm. That is bringing you a little bit of hope. That is something that you are living with and is something that you know you might get judged on and might make your life in some aspects more difficult. So this idea that you shouldn't be reminded that or that shouldn't happen because that's gonna take away the joy yeah. of watching a game is nonsense. And also, if you're not from one of those marginalized groups, like I'm not from that community, but if I see a rain, Harry Kane wearing a red wine band, does that spoil my joy of the game? No. Does that make me think, well, that's just ruined the six three yeah. victory over Iran? No. 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 Does, I don't, you know what I mean? It doesn't, make, it doesn't affect me at all. Yet it might give some people who are marginalised a little bit of a, a lift. Especially when football is is clearly from the fact that there are 
no openly gay footballers or professional footballers at the, at the sort of the top in level in the men's game. Yeah, in the men's game. Yeah, it is. It is clearly a sport that is somewhat behind the rest of society in terms of its perceived acceptance of those groups. So doing things that would hopefully make people more accepting of that is only a good thing, surely. And like you said, who cares? Like, if I, Harry I, Kane's got a, a rainbow armband on, I don't go, I can't watch this now. No, it's it, not for it, me, it this. What are you of talking the, about? Of those absolute muppets who were booing the black liar, the yeah. people taking the knee. Oh, it's, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, again, what difference does that make in your life? They've not postponed the game while it happens. No. Do you know what I mean? It's not affecting anyone's performance. It doesn't matter to you if it doesn't matter to you. And if it does, it's something that you can be get behind and be pleased to see. Yeah. So again, it's just I just wish Infantino would just shut up with his nonsense. Mm. Because even when it's like, all right, you feel like in a way we're moving on. I know for not everyone will feel that way, but you look like, okay, we're talking about it, yeah, the World Cup final. He has to wade in a, again and almost judge and, and, and just come in with his ham fisted comments about these issues and about the way people have reacted to them. Almost like he's gloating about it. And I just feel like it's just really, really distasteful. And it just, it just annoys me all that because I just think you don't have to do that and you don't know what you're talking about as well. Um, Sam Z says, do you think there should be a rule limiting how much minutes matches a player can play a season to set them from injuries, say a 60 game limit? I think the only problem with that, bro, and I understand that, is you could get to the point where international managers and, and club managers are at loggerheads. Because if Bruno Fernandes has played 59 games for Manchester United and his last game of the season mm. is the Europa League final um, and his Portugal manager ever comes in and takes off Portugal because says, well, I need him for this qualifier I've got. Yeah. Are you going to go, well, all right, I'll drop him then? Is Unless you do it separately. Here's a question now. Go on. Do we have the data on, like, how many games a player can play before it becomes, like, f like fitness and performance is just hindered because in the 60s and 50s and 70s and I don't know why I'm doing it in a sort of random order in the 50s 60s 70s 80s sort of pre-premier league um an international player would have to play every game for 15 years to get 100 caps for their country yeah. now you can get 150 caps by playing friendlies and you know you can do the same thing but there are so many more players who play more national games because there are more friendlies there are more <laughs> nations league this that and the other people tend to play like you can play 60 games a season every single season now for your club as well because of those extra games and all that but if you'd have said that to someone 50 60 years ago they would have said that was physically impossible yeah and with the advancements of you know tracking of stats and and data and fitness and food and all that shit it's now you humans are now capable of, of doing more and athletes are now capable of doing more what is the limit Do, is there one or, or could theoretically you know in 10 years uh, you know the, the record holder ho play 250 games the, for the country the problem seems to be that they're doing it they're making decision first and it's a business decision of we yeah, need to play this many games in the Carabao Cup the AFL Cup the FA Cup this 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 and this Champions League we're going to add more games to that we're going to add more games to the Europa League we're going to add more qualifying oh and we're going to do more international stuff as well they're doing that and then go in okay how do we fix it how do we put gaps mm. in how do we put these breaks in Instead of going, like you said there, doing the research, see what a person can do. Because maybe, maybe if they spread everything out across the year and almost had no break in between. Yeah. You know, have you don't do midweek games, so you don't double weeks, but you don't have a break in the middle of the season almost. You don't have that three weeks in between the internationals and the yeah. that. Get rid of friendlies and stuff. Could could you do it where it's one game a week all the way through? But that's that's 50, only 52 that's games, That's 52 though, isn't games. It? I can, is that a possibility or something? Yeah. But there isn't, like you said, I think the... The problem is you've got the managers of the club who I think are looking at these things kicking off about it more. There's yeah. none, no manager at a club is going, this is great, players no. can do this, don't. Every single one of them that's looking at the stats is worried. Yeah. So to me, that says to me that there is a breaking point at some point. There are going to be physical you know, limitations and stuff. Ed says, going to have to sack off domestic cups and friendlies. I wonder one day whether they might just end up getting rid of something like the League Cup, the Carabao Cup. Yeah. I, when when like the money becomes a thing where they go, well, we'll make more. Especially money. when they've already like. I hope not because I love the no, League yeah. Cup. I do. I've had some of my best memories as a United fan watching them genuinely the League Cup. You know, what yeah. I mean, like the, my first um, one of my favourite first memories of being at Old Trafford was in the what was then the Rumblows Cup against Liverpool, mm. beating three one. It was the League Cup, and it was you know, it was mint. The atmosphere was amazing. Um, so I'd, I'd hate to see that happen, but it's I think that could be a consideration. I think it will be. Bec they need to do something because. 
already you see a lot of the top teams basically playing their second team in the League Cup. I think it's right. the, the money shows it because the sponsor change every four years. So yeah. obviously they're not getting enough out of it as a yeah. as a marketing thing of this is what it is. They're not getting enough out of that. So no. it's changing constantly. So you're right. I think it gets to a point where they go. We Especially when it's like, this. oh, we're adding in the Europa Conference League as well. Yeah. Like where it's like, basically, if you finish in the top half of your divi- domestic division, you're playing in Europe next season. <laughs> so that, yeah. that also means now yeah. that teams that have got players and, and smaller squads, someone like Burnley, for instance, yeah. who... I don't remember what the highest they ever finished in the Premier League is, but someone like Burnley could have a year where they finish eighth. And now you've got a team with like 15 players, basically, having an extra minimum six, up to sort of 10, 12 extra games, um, that is just not possible. Like, you can't have a team where, who, who is it? Like, Sheffield United would have been in the Europa Conference League three years ago. Or they're about, I think they finished eighth or ninth, yeah, so yeah, whatever yeah. it was. Anyway, teams like that where they're basically championship squads yeah. who have a really good year and now you've got an extra eight games to play. Well, you're getting relegated then, aren't you? The money just because it's impossible. to them yet. Because even West Ham struggled massively in Europa League. Yeah. And they're all the Europa Conference League last year. They, they did it, did well and got to the end. But the league form just plummeted because yeah. they, they've not got the squads. They're not built to be these kind of squads. And unless you get the Champions League money, which is the big money, yeah. You can't build a squad that allows you to compete on two or no. three different fronts. You can't have 25 players that are Premier League quality on the budgets that they would need to pay each player with the money they get from the Conference League. Like They pay their players almost as much as anyone. They're slightly lesser players, but they're still paying them 100, 100 grand a week, 150 grand a week for the top players. They can't have 25 players like that for the money you get from the Europa Conference League. So it, that's my worry with the World Cup stuff. It's like, yeah. you need bigger squads again. What money are we getting from? Like I just, no, I don't know, it's just... It, it, I like the concept, but I don't see how it fits. Whenever there's more football and you know more games, there's part of me that things like what you were saying, Joe, earlier, like oh, you know I love football, yeah, give me more of it. But then you think of some of these like lads. Um, oh yeah, there's a stat there. Yeah, Burnley so got seventh in 2017, 18. If you're still interested, um, so what's this? I saw them versus Olympiacos. So Burnley, Europa. sorry, Burnley even got Europe, right? Yeah, yeah they but did. but like there are other teams who are even sort of smaller. They got than relegated that. within 18 months of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. They did, didn't they play, like, was it Aberdeen or someone? Mm. And and Olympiacos. Olympiacos, Olympiacos. Olympiacos. But I think they won one and then lost the next one. Yes. Um, yeah, I think, like, yeah, more football, yeah, give me more football and all that sort of stuff. But some of these players as well, like, mentally, it's a bit of a drain. Yeah. You know what I mean? You saw the state of some of our players post the Euros. They just weren't, didn't look right at all. No. Do you know what I mean? Even the ones that had a successful tournament. Yeah. Um, well, particularly, Maguire, Shaw and Rashford, yeah. all three of them came back... Completely different players to the ones that went to the Euros. Yeah, like Rashford and Sancho. Like, Sancho as well, yeah. Looked like they were affected by what had mm. gone on. And understandably, because mm. it's not, you know, it, this old nonsense, they earn enough money. That doesn't stop you being stressed. Or hurt. Yeah, or hurt. Like Rashford yeah. is literally, yeah. you're, you've got a broken back. Yeah. Well, if I had 250 grand a week, I wouldn't have a broken you, back. man. Um, so, yeah, it's it's one of those where you think, could it be a bit of a mental like strain mm. on people as well, and young players, and I don't know, like, you know, there is a part of me that feels like whenever they've brought about changing football, everyone's always pushed back on it. And a lot of the time, it has been a positive. I, you know, just about remember the Champions League coming in, the Premier League, people pushing mm. back on that. And you, you'd argue that was a pretty positive move. But then there's the other side of it where the Super League, for example, was a horrible idea mm. and was rightly sort of, you know, squashed because of the fans. Mm. It was the fans that did that. Had the fans not done anything, I'm 100% confident that Super League would have gone ahead. Mm. But as soon as they realised, the fans mobilised. And how hard is it to get fans of, like, you know, United and Arsenal and everywhere else, Chelsea, to, Chelsea, to, to agree on one thing? Very difficult. And yeah, everyone did. And they realised it couldn't happen. I uh, could see Solo in the chat uh, from the Man United agenda. Uh, should we talk about Ralph Ragnick? Yeah. Because we haven't <laughs> spoken about him. and it's, we're, we're doing a proper house and brew here, aren't we? Where we're just avoiding the topic. At least talking talk football-ish. About. Yeah. Um... Ralph Radnick, in sort of the summer or whenever it was, towards the end of his time at United, he was saying that he um, he wanted a host of players, didn't he? He said he wanted Alvarez, he wanted or he named um, the kid at Liverpool Diaz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he you know he, he, he would have liked United to go for Haaland. Obviously, that's a bit of a no-brainer. But he's named some of these players and. The Ram- and Unkunku, I think, was another one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then there was Vlavic who went to Juventus. Now, yeah, yeah. He mentioned this. He said, "You know, I wanted a forward," and United said no, which is probably what got him sacked eventually. Or that's what ended up leading to him yeah. not being a United. The only pushback to these names was the dates didn't 
fully line up a little bit. Why? Because he kind of said th- the big issue was after the Mason Greenwood stuff happened, which yeah. was the 30th of January. I wanted to sign X, Y, and Z. Flavic signed for events on the third on the same day. Yeah. Diaz signed for Liverpool the day after, yeah. and Alvarez signed for City on the 31st. So, right. So there might be a bit of. So there was a bit of that. But, but I, was, think I think it, he did what a January sign. And he said, he? There was, obviously, yeah. look, three went. So yeah. there was an availability. There was players there that are yeah. quality. Because he was, he, he said that he was told that there wasn't deemed to be the quality in the market, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. He said, he said, um, he said he, he wanted a January signing, a striker in January. He said, um, he told reporters the answer at the time was no. There was no player on the market that could really help us. That's the one. But there were a few: Diaz, who is now, who is now at Liverpool; Alvarez, who will be at Man City in the summer; Vlahovic, who at the time was still at Juve. Those are just three of them that came across my mind now. So he's, he's saying yeah. uh, we had four days off at the time, and on the Sunday I was informed about the issues with Mason Greenwood, and obviously Andy Marshall had already left. And then I was aware that within four days we had some strikers missing and it might make sense. Sense, sorry, we were still in three competitions, Champions League, FA Cup and fourth in the league, but that's in the past and it doesn't help us anymore. So, and yes, I get your point. It's the, the dates are a bit, you know, touch and go. But we spoke about Bruno Fernandes when he came in in January in 2020 and how he gave us that massive boost. And you feel like one player can make a difference to a team that's struggling. Yeah. Like it can. And it was obvious United needed something. You had... Ronnie, to be fair, was still banging in goals. Marcus had fallen off a cliff. Ilanga wasn't the player we, th- we were hoping he would be, I think, no. basically. We kept throwing him in. Wasn't really getting any goals and assists, especially, I think, Pels Madrid didn't get any. And it was just like, you know what? It's just Sometimes you get that one player and it gets everyone going and there's a bit of competition for places and, and all the rest of it and it gives you everyone the a th- lift. But the, the thing with ne- that for me is something, I think. It's almost like, obviously... Fundamentally, the issue is the Glazers, and we've, you know we've we've said that in, infinitely on this channel. But if we look at it as a more sort of whose job is it to do this, the Glazers aren't picking players, are they? That's not no. they aren't doing no. that. No one is suggesting that they are. I think United's scouting system has had a real sort of foot off the gas mentality for a very long time. Like as we as we we all have said numerous times, when's the last time United scouts bought someone that? We hadn't seen uh, trending on Twitter or a compilation of going around doing the rounds or this is the next hottest pro- uh, prospect here. Or the, when's the last time we bought someone? He went, so who's that? Dan James. Dan James. And even then, and he was, nah, but and he, he was, <laughs> but he was, remember, like, Leeds wanted him. I understand what you, you mean. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. I'm, Leeds I'm wanted him for four and a half million in uh, January, and we bought him in the June for twelve million. Yeah, and he definitely had a word off. His international manager gig, he got obviously gone to Solskjaer. Yeah, he's quite good at him. Yeah. But Again. like, yeah. all right, then that turned out to be a success because Bruno Fernandes is the closest thing to a bargain we've had. Mm. But he was forty-six million and put producing the greatest goal-scoring performance of any midfielder in football history. So he was hardly under the radar. Yeah, now nah, I he think just Spurs think, like, and the Scousers were linked as well. I know, and, and I've said this as well. I know that s- at some point. United's job isn't to buy the Cantes for 300,000 or the Mahrez's for 300,000 because you let teams like Leicester take risks on yeah. those players because for every Cante, there's five whoever the fox that yeah. you never hear of, that never break into the first team, that aren't very good. Those risks that don't pay off. So I, don't, I understand that that can't be United's full-time transfer strategy because yeah. if it is, you end up doing what Leicester's a bad example because they've won the league, but typically they finish top 10 but no higher. That is that is what you would get if you did that every week, or Wool, for instance. But United never surprise you in the transfer market. No. Like, look at who we've signed recently, and, I'm, and I love it, and we've signed some great players. Varane, literally the best centre-back of the last decade. Yeah. Uh, 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 Lissandro Martinez, the manager's favourite player from his old club. Anthony, his second favourite player from his old club. Like Casemiro. Bruno, I think this Casemiro, is- the best defensive midfielder of the last decade. Ronaldo, the most famous footballer of all time. When's the is- last time we signed someone where you go... Fucking, that was a bargain. I Even someone like Alex Tellers, who was cheap, was very well known, like, sort of, kind of a Brazilian r- reliable left he was, back. Wasn't he? he was a Brazilian yeah. national. Yeah. Was Porto's was captain. And was putting numbers up because he and was, was taking was, free kicks. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. scoring like. 10 goals a season from left back yeah. like and he and even he didn't turn out to be very good but it's just like I just I, I feel like Rangnick's point or him saying or the, the, the scouts or whoever it was responsible saying we don't see anyone that's any good basically everyone's shit that's available is just such a sign of how our transfers have been for the last seven or eight years where it's if it's not a big name we're not interested I think this is the problem because I, I remember chatting to someone I think it was, it was 18 months ago and this, this lad who went 
knew from friend of a friend, was head of one of City's groups in um, America. Mm. It was one of their coaches in America. And I was saying to these lads, I said, you know how far behind City we are? We're so f- it's not about name a player in the first team and, oh, we're not, f- you know, if we get a, another midfielder, we'll mm. be as good as City. You know, we're not far away squad-wise. Get a couple of... Their group or whatever it is, their group of coaches and scouts across the world, the fact they've got people in America and here, you know, I don't have that. You look at... I remember being at college with my mate going to... We went and watched a, a youth tournament on a sun, Sunday morning because he was doing some scouting. And it was Bayern Munich's team versus PSG's team in Florida mm. playing. And City had a team there. United don't have any of that. They don't mm. have these smaller teams all over the world that are playing. Our scouting network is so small. It's so been... You know, it's not been looked at. And this is why City can go Alvarez in, in Argentina. Yeah. who's scoring goals looks obvious and people are talking about him, but they can back it because yeah. they've got people in and around it that are in that league, in that division, that have scouted him from an early age and can make those decisions. Yeah. United don't have that. That's why no. we signed Casemiro. Casemiro's a great player, but is it not the most obvious? Again, it's yeah. one of the most the, obvious the signings around obvious there. Is good. A couple, a couple of people works. in the in the chat have said Malasio, which is, a, you know... He's a but again, that a was the manager came in and told ma- him about that's that. not the club going. No, it was not the scouting system. Again, you could tell that because you went from you knew you could get the feelings of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's targets who he wanted, and, and you know it looked like he missed out on Haaland, obviously Bellingham, these are the big names and stuff. It looked like and I think Declan Rice as well. They've gone away now yeah. because the managers come in and gone. No, here you go. Here's my list. Yeah. I've done this for Ajax. Obviously, these are the two I like. Like you said, Malassia, I know. And then they've gone, Frankie de Jong as well, I've worked with him, he's pretty good as well. Yeah. And it's, it is a manager lay scouting. Now, whether this changed in the summer, now, th- we've talked about, I think, like, there's so much change at United. And there was a couple of, he- I think there was the head scout and another guy as well who was really high up in the scouting, I can't remember the names. Um, they left the club, didn't they, about six yeah, to eight months yeah. ago. The, the, then there were rumours came out that they were kind of not really doing the job you would think they'd be doing with those titles, <laughs> and it might not make the same effect that you would assume. But there has been changes, but it just feels like... I don't know. I like I, I like signing big names and Casemiro has been great and all that. But then, like you said, where is why don't United don't act like a big club? We don't w- operate like we are the biggest club in England. City operate like they're the biggest club in England by having. I know it's all a bit dodgy and what's going on, but like owning the club in New York, owning uh, the club in is it South Africa, the other club that they own as well, where it's like they they are setting up camps and sort of they like a dozen teams. Th- different things, yeah, like a dozen teams <laughs> yeah, around the world <laughs> where they're filtering, they're scouting, they're putting Frank Lampard there and he's coming yeah, on loan to City. Yeah, but he signed for New York yeah. City and then they but like, Man City. That's the sort of thing that even if you don't agree with it, if it doesn't feel like football, it's a bit modern and 21st century sort of business and fraud and all that weird shit going on. It's the sort of thing that a club with a vision of a mass worldwide structure has. Man United go, well, we used to do a little bit of Royal Antwerp, but we stopped that 20 years ago. You don't even need to be the city Antwerp, level of doing Sorry. it. No, it was Royal Antwerp. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. You don't even yeah. need to be the city level. Do it. Look how Liverpool have done it. They've, again, this approach, this statistical approach of getting in plays that fit profiles and fitness yeah. and all these yeah, different things. Because they had, I think, was it Salah was already being looked at. Yeah. And, and even Van Dijk was a long term target um, before. Uh, Mane was there before. Is there not? I understand everything you've said, and I kind of agree with it, but this summer, did we not get it right? Yes. So far. Yeah. We're we're 13 games into the season. No, no, no. no, no, It's far too early. I think Casemiro is one way you almost go. I do think this summer was, um, in terms of the player recruitment, you can argue about the prices, especially for Anthony. I do think it was a phenomenal summer. I, but we would have said that about Solskjaer's 2020 summer when wan Maguire, Dan James uh, and Bruno Fernandes, not that, not that no, he was in the summer, January but that, that year, for 12 months after we'd signed them, they got us to Europa League final, they got second in the league. No one said Maguire was a bad signing until after Mikanos. I feel like No this, one did. I understand, like... Oh, after the Euros, sorry. That was a decent summer. I still felt a little bit short that I, summer. Yeah, I but feel, what I, feel I mean like, is and the also, signings and was themselves... No, none of those signings were like... For me, personally, I can only speak for myself, like a Casemiro signing one. I think Bruno was. Casem- no, that's t- I'm talking about the summer. The we summer, not the yeah. 12 months. We signed Bruno in the January. I mean, that summer when we got wan and Maguire and Dan James, yeah. it was three decent players, especially Maguire when I thought, yeah, that's a really good signing for us. I'll, I'll, my hands up are dead. But like, there was a bit of a wow factor this summer, I thought. Like, mm. when it was Casemiro in particular, I'm like, crikey, I can't believe we've got yeah. him. Martinez has been a revelation. 
and like you know Ericsson was was a nice looking. Yeah. So I feel like you, you're right. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying for this summer, I feel like it it kind of made sense what we did. The only thing that didn't make sense for me, the way we went about the Anthony signing. Yeah. Because me and you were covering it so many times where we're in with Anthony. He's forty million. He's fifty million. He's sixty million. He's seventy million. Every week it was going up. Yeah. And eventually because they sell another player. Yeah. And, and they don't need don't need money. the money. And yeah. And then it got to hundred million and we bought him. You've seen, you the Vandes, you've seen the Van der Sar clip from the Athletic where he's gone. We didn't need to sell him. We no. weren't going to sell him. We'd, yeah. we'd planned, we'd sold Martinez, and I think they'd sold a lad to buy in as well. Yeah, it's um, trying to think the central midfielder. I can't remember yeah, his they'd name. Signed, they'd yeah. sold them. That Young was lad. their income dump. Yeah. They were like, I, we don't need any more money. We are a well-run club, sustainable. We don't need any more money. Anthony, but then it just got to a point where United were like, no, no, what, what's, and what's the Gra and yeah, What is the price? Mm. If we give you 100 million, will you do it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. But I think and the other thing with the summer, sorry, is that, that was you've looked at the balance sheet frustrating now. frustrating for me. Well, not frustrating because, you know, there's still a part of me with things, it's just money that they'll waste on themselves anyway. But it, it's not great sort of management and business to go, yeah. I'm not having a dig at Eric tonight, I can't no. worry about what he's given, but it's not great to go, we'll leave it out late until you're doing it like the way. But you look at it now, that can't, it's, it's not sustainable. Under, under this ownership, it's not, because that's it now. And the worrying, yeah. thing, for me is, the worrying thing for me is like that like, is, if you bought all those players that we bought and they were all like early 20s, mm. mid-20s, you'd think, all right, but, you know, Ericsson, I know he's a free, but he's 30. Casemiro's 30, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like they're long-term signings. So and you've still got an element of, in three years' time, you might be needing to replace two of your midfielders. Yeah. And we've got you know a credit card bill of 300 million yeah. now. To so your, that's a worry. To your point there of, did we not get it right, though? I think that... It's it's almost for me that sort of stop clock is right twice a day thing where yeah. you keep doing this where you go for Di Maria and Falcao and Lukaku and and Zlatan and and Cavani and Ronaldo and Sancho and Varane and Casemiro like eventually one of the best players be in fair, the world is going to play jo okay under, for Manchester under Jose, United. I felt that that first window Pogba was, was, was solid. Pogba, Zlatan, Mkhitaryan, mm. and, and Bailly, I think. Bailly, yeah. yeah. And I thought, that's a good window. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That looks, with a new manager. But again, then, but because that's good. the system, you follow it up with a, a, a not so good window. No, no, no. I know, it, then I know, then I know. it all crumbles again. No, because that's, look that's at the gaps. Worry. That's my point is, yeah. the gap is 2016, 2022. You've got those two windows yeah. there. And, that's, you know, I think the windows in between, whilst the, the Maguire and, and Wamsel was an all right window, it was decent. Mm. I don't, I think it's, there was still a lot of question mm. marks there, especially after the way we'd finished the previous season. Mm. So it's like those two seasons out of the last six of ones where I'd go, those summers are, are eight. Yeah. Every other summer, I think, has been flawed. Yeah, and I you would even I mean? still say that this summer, it's, it is pretty, it's still kind of too early to call yeah. it success. Yeah. Because I, I know the players aren't quite the same quality and stuff, but we would have rated that summer that we're talking about now, the Maguire, Wambasaka, Dan James summer, as being maybe not where we need to be, but a successful it was a step summer. In the right direction. Three first team players yeah. who have improved the I team, the, the, and now you look back at it and you go, well, none of them three are wastes of money. Yeah, none of them are good enough, and I didn't. I certainly didn't think that after the first dozen games. Yeah, exactly. I so said it many, a million times, I, 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 Wambasaka. People try and rewrite history, but he started off very well. Uh, it's great for United. 18 months. Uh, let me get in some yeah, of the yeah, chats. Sorry, um, Biggie Third says, we need to stop saying anyone after Mourinho was right. What did Ragnick or Ronaldo say that we didn't already know, giving credit for the obvious? It is a little bit that, but also the one thing I will, and I, I, the, the, the football under Ralph Ragnick wasn't good enough, and I've said before, he was well out of his depth. But the one thing I give him credit for is at least he called out the owners whilst he was there. Yeah. Do you know and what I mean? And a lot of protest yeah, in any form is, is obvious. Bit. But the fact that you are doing it and you're in a position that you are and you are saying it still makes it not brave by any means, but like noteworthy, yeah. different, bigger than, you know, just us as fans saying it because no one listens to us as fans. But people listen to the current sitting manager of Manchester <laughs> United saying you're fucking about behind the scenes. This is a joke. It may have been obvious, but it's still big that he would have said that. I think uh, that he did say that. Sorry. Anyway, it's sad times. Because the housewife's favourite is leaving us, aren't you? <sighs> the I elephant am. in the room. Yes. Yeah. That's I not I've been prolonging this harsh. podcast. I didn't want it to end. But it has. And, you know. Alex is leaving. We've stretched the budget. And we've actually gone to Marxist. Because yeah. we know you're yeah, a man, you man of, you know, superior taste than me. And, so. and you're moving house. So yeah. we thought you'd get your yeah, house I mean, present. You've got your little something there. Thank to you, be fair, we're revealing yeah. this like it's a big comedy present. It's actually just a normal no, little gift. You know, we're proud of ourselves. Three okay. force pants set. Where's he sitting? Yeah, there you go. Look. Look at that. Ah, three, three force pants set. I need three, them. Yeah. So, so you've got. I actually had 14 centimetre, 16 centimetre, 18 centimetre. Which is 
Three of my favourite centimetres. Honestly. Cooking me hello fresh things in there. Yeah. See, always See right up to the end of your job. Love, lad. He's Still always on it. it. There's well a done. card in there as well you Thank can open you. later. But enjoy that. Also, the receipts in there if you want to take it back. <laughs> yeah. Just in case, you know, you I think. Yeah, right, I, I need sauce pants. I've already yeah. got them sauce pants. Go. Uh, Ab- Abdullah Ibrahim says, stadium needs upgrading and redevelopment. Training ground needs upgrading too. The sooner they leave, the better. Congrats on the new place, baggers. Yes. Um, before we go, Dublin, right? We're going to be there. In fact, you're even even though you're leaving us, you're coming down, aren't you? I'm coming down. Good lads. Um, so it's gonna be me, Joe Smith, Adam McCola, Stephen Housen, and Brian McClare. Manchester United legend Brian McClare is gonna be there. We're gonna be at our first ever live event at Stretford Paddock. Come down and join us. It'll be a real laugh. We're gonna, you know, just there's no filler with Brian McClare. Stretford there's Paddock. There's no live. filler at all. And uh, you know, there's no filler with Stephen Housen either, so it'll just be a right laugh. Yeah. So come down and join us. There's a link in the chat. You can see there, 30th of December. We look forward to, to seeing you guys down there. If you're not doing as well, check out the members section for the 12 Days of Paddock. Don't forget to check out Alex Bagley on your socials. Where can people find you? Baggers underscore Alex. You can't find him on this channel, but you'll still be able to find him there. Thank yeah, you very much. Hopefully, you, you will be on this channel yeah, again Yeah, hopefully, he's still coming back. Yeah, still come on. Yeah, this won't be the last yeah. of Alex Bagley, yeah, yeah. but so it's the, everyone, the last of All those housewives are yeah. just devastated. Don't worry, we'll be getting him back yeah, on. Yeah, he will be coming on again. Uh, Thank you very much, you? Alex. Yeah, thanks, Bagley. Yeah. For keeping the lights on. He doesn't just do on-camera stuff. He keeps the lights on for us, Baggers. He's yeah. done sensational work down the years. He has. Um, but yeah, Sloppy Joe's podcast, new episode uh, out yesterday or the day before. So make sure you go check that out. Very good yeah. stuff. Um, you know where to find me as well. We've got a video with Stephen Housen out tomorrow because he's over there in Qatar. Oh, look at me. I'm meeting R9. Oh, hello, meeting by Stuart. If he meets Beckham, I'm not talking to him about that. I'm not talking to him anyway. It was just silence. I didn't actually the video well, I did with it. Mm. Just <laughs> seven minutes of meeting him, just sat there sulking. Quite nice, though. Yeah, but it's then it's quite relaxing. Put yeah. it on when you fall into sleep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this has been The Brew. That's been Baggers. That's been Joe Smith. I've been Jay Motte. Thanks for watching.